Till now, you've been using R functions for quite a while. And there are some rules about using functions which we have not actually made explicit so far and we have asked you to take it on faith and you've been doing that successfully. But I think the time has come for you to understand some of these concepts quite well. Uh, so you would have noticed that when you call functions, sometimes you are asked to give the name of the argument, sometimes you are asked not to give the name of the argument or uh, not necessarily to give the name of the argument. So what I want to do in this particular lecture is to just get into the depth of that a little bit and understand that more clearly. So first of all, let's just take a look at the documentation for the function called mean. You can get at this by just typing question mark mean at the command prompt in RStudio and the documentation for that will pop up on the bottom right hand side uh, pane and the initial part of that documentation shows you that arithmetic mean is the name of the function. The description is a generic function for the trimmed arithmetic mean. Right now we won't get into the trimmed part of it. And it says usage mean x comma dot dot dot. That means the first argument is, uh, is a required argument. All the others are optional arguments dot dot dot. There are several other arguments that are there. And when they say dot dot dot, what they are also saying is that there are many named arguments. So for example, you're seeing here uh, mean x comma, the first argument is x and the second argument is trim equals 0. The third argument is na dot rm equals false. So the named arguments are all optional arguments. right? You can either supply values for them depending on the context or not. So let's look at this. So one thing you could do is to explicitly name the function arguments. So for example, suppose I have dat as a vector with some numbers and I can just say mean dat and of course that would mean that the first argument by default, right, if you looked at the previous slide, the first argument by default is the vector for which we want the average to be calculated and since, uh, you know, this, this is not a named argument, you don't necessarily have to give the name for this argument because its position it's in the first place so we can directly use it and so therefore I can just say mean that and I'm going to get the result 5.5 but I can also say mean x equals that right that is because x is the name of that first argument right so look here the name of the first argument is x so I can explicitly name it if I do want to do so that's fine Okay, so I can say mean x equals that and of course I get the same result, right? But because the first argument is x, if I'm giving only one argument, it's going to map to the first position so it's going to work properly. So here we are using the positional way of calling this function, positional way of passing this particular argument by saying I'm passing that in the first position and the first argument is x so, you know, map it to x and do the job. So it does that and here we are doing the named way of giving the argument, right? So that is x equals dat. We are saying take this value dat and use it for this particular argument which is named as x. Both of them are correct. It will work. Okay, so that's this x here is a map matching to the x here in the documentation. It's positional. Now, if the position is known, there's really no need to name it. You can still name it. There's nothing wrong in naming it. Right, so in this case, that's what we did in the first way. We said mean that because the position was named uh, was known. Okay, so this is that example of mean that. You can explicitly name function arguments. So, for example, here I've got a vector with some unknown or missing values. Right, so in this case, if I did mean of that, the result is going to be na because these values are unknown. And in order to calculate the mean, R is first going to add up all the values and then divide by the total number. And when it adds up the values, we already know that when some when you've got NAs in an expression, you try to add NAs, you're going to get unknown result. And therefore, the result is unknown divided by the length of this vector, which is unknown. right? Of course, often when we calculate the mean, we want to say, please calculate the mean while ignoring the missing values. Okay, so forget about the missing values and calculate the mean of the remaining values and you have used this argument in R called na.rm which is a logical value which means you have to give it a value of true or false. Okay, and it indicates whether na should be stripped before the computation proceeds. 
So you can say here, suppose we want to do this. Suppose we just want to say mean that false, right? We want to pass the argument, the, the value false to that argument na.rm. This will fail because as the documentation indicates, na.rm is the third argument, right? Now, when I'm here, I'm just passing it by position, right? So what I'm really saying is false should be mapped to the second argument because I'm using position. So false will be mapped to trim, which is not what we want. We want false to be mapped to na.rm, right? So this fails because it's saying trim must be numeric of length one because it's trying to map false to trim and trim it's expecting to be a number but you're passing it a boolean so it's saying I don't know how to deal with this right now fortunately the data types did not match and therefore it was able to give an error message now if it so happened that this argument trim could also accept boolean values then R would not have been able to give us this error message because this false would have worked fine for the boolean if this were a boolean and it would have done something right so we have to be really careful when we look at the documentation when we are using uh, positional then we have to be really sure that it's going to get mapped to the correct place okay so this is what uh, showed us that the second argument is trim so I was trying to match not true false to trim and that didn't work because it trim is supposed to be numeric okay this shouldn't be true, this should be false. Okay, so so here if I want to pass true to na.rm, if we want to pass true, then I have to explicitly indicate na.rm is true, right? So now it will work because the moment you name an argument then its position doesn't matter. Where you put it in the sequence doesn't matter, right? So in this case, although it's occurring in the second position, since I've named it, it'll get mapped correctly. And trim is an optional argument, so we are ignoring it. Okay, so then this is going to work fine. It's going to calculate the mean, ignoring the two missing values. Okay, since we are skipping the second argument, we need to let R know the true is the value for na.rm and not for the second argument which is trim okay now suppose we do want to pass a value for trim as well or we want to use positional then you can do this you can say mean that comma one which is what we are passing to trim and true to na.rm okay and by the way when in the documentation when it says trim equals zero na.rm equals false right now these are all optional arguments and what these things show is these are the default values that R will use if we do not pass any values for them right these are optional so we can just say mean that right in that case R is going to say trim equals 0 na.rm equals false those are the values it's going to use if you don't if you want trim to be 1 and na.rm to be true then you can do this you can use the positional approach here as well because this will map to trim and this will map to na.rm. Everything will work fine. Now, for the present moment, the meaning of what trim is doesn't really matter for us. So that's why I'm not getting into those details. In this lecture, we are only interested in just the, you know, how arguments get mapped to the uh, parameters. That's it. Okay, so this is getting mapped. Uh, that is getting mapped to x. One is getting mapped to trim and true is getting mapped to na.rm so everything is fine